Mirio's original. And welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we play your voicemails and read your reviews. I am Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I, Producer Maria. Uh, just a note, you can review on Spotify now. So if you would like to leave us a review, please do so. We so far have, oh, I just rated it. Took me a second. Maybe less than a, a second. Review or just rate it? No, you can just rate it. So far, we have 4.9 stars and 117 ratings. Amazing. Wow. So please do that. All you do is just open our podcast and then you click where it says the star and then just do all of them. Click all, all the way the up. Stars. <laughs> all the stars. Click all the stars. Just click all the stars and then you're done So, Do we have any new reviews? Yeah, we have... A- a, a lot. Oh, shit. This one's from Magardoodle37. La 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 boyoing. Best podcast of all the best mystery, true crime, cryptid, female serial killer, and red lobster stories you could want. Mailbags are the best. Allie has the voice of an angel. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is from oh, GPA's Grandpa's Boy. 11 out of 10 would recommend. I wish I could men in black my memory and listen to all the episodes for the first time all over again. Love you like a sis times three. Uh, oh, that's... Is that what that did, means? Oh, wow. Did you look it up or did you know that? No, that's L-Y-L-A-S. Love you like a sis. Well, I know that, but did you know oh my that God, already? You guys, we're getting a call. We're getting oh, a call. We're right getting answer it. We're answer it. That'd be so funny. Answer it. Answer it. Answer no. it. Answer it. That's Should so I funny. Should I answer it? Yes, that'd be so funny. Okay, wait. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> They hang up. Say it's this is Maria. Hi, this. <laughs> I know you were not supposed to pick up. This is Maria from Web Crawlers, but you called as we were recording an episode, and so I. Had to I'm so, I'm so sorry, Melissa and Allie. Can you hear? No, no. we can't. Unfortunately. Oh my god, they can't hear. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. But we were just. I was like, you guys, someone's calling. I have to answer. <laughs> Maria's crying. No, just call back. Just call back. Or unless you want to, you know, I wait, hold on a minute. I know what to do. Hold on one second. Do you want to be on the podcast live? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on one second. I have to take my ear, my AirPods off. Hold on one second. How oh my God. This thrilling. is so fun. I'm, I, I know I'm scared. This is incredible. How okay. Thrilling. Can you hear them now? Can you hear them? Oh, it's like we're doing a live call in radio show. Yeah, this is cool. We should be on the radio now that I think about it. Can you hear us <laughs> now? Should. Okay, here we are. This is Maria, Allie, and Melissa. Hi. I feel like a stalker. Hi, you're live on the radio. You scared the poo out of me for one thing. Like, no one's supposed to chat when I'm I totally forgot what I was going to say. We're so sorry. I mean, that makes sense. What is your name? Yeah. What's your name? This is Amber Leah from Oregon. No way! Oh, hey! <laughs> wow. Well, what's going on? Oh, what what, what were you yes. calling in with? Well, I was going to call to talk about, like, the Beanie Baby thing, you know? How it Ooh. became such a craze, and then, like, it's odd how things that you never thought would be a craze are a craze. Like, I was looking up freaking Polly Pocket yesterday, you know, like the original Polly Pocket? Oh, yeah. I loved Polly Pocket. Oh, yeah. The tiny ones, right? Yeah. Do you know those are worth yes. like four hundred dollars? What? 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 Yeah, like you're like, I was literally looking at some of the ones that I had when I was a kid, and I was like, oh god, I wish I had kept them. They're like, oh my god, these are like they're worth way more than the Beanie Babies ever are. Like, <laughs> there's Whoa. whole like groups on Facebook for trading the old Polly Pockets because they were discontinued, you know. And now there's these huge things that aren't even Polly Pockets. Like they're weird. I don't, I hate the new ones, and they've tried to like recreate the old ones, and they're even worse now. Like, I wow. loved Polly wow. Pockets. Okay, well, so I might have some Polly Pockets still. I wonder Uh-oh. if I'm sitting on a gold mine. Is what you're saying? You probably are. Like, 
literally like some of them are worth like hundreds of dollars. And like there's on eBay, they're not going Facebook, for much. There's like Polly Pocket trade groups now where they like ship and buy and sell Polly Pockets like the old fashioned. It has to be the Bluebird, the original Bluebird Polly Pockets. They're like, oh, what I'm like, God, I used to love those things. Like, I get all excited to get them. And, like, you know, you could carry them anywhere. They were freaking awesome. Do you remember the boys' ones were Mighty Max? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I don't oh, remember. Oh, thank those. you. It was I'm trying to figure that out. It was like, I believe, wait, hold on. Let me see. Mighty Max. Yeah, they were like boys' ones, but it was like, it was like Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> like instead of it being like a, weird monsters, yeah. Wow, this Polly Pocket on Etsy is going for a thousand dollars. So thank you, you just helped me. Yeah, you're welcome. A thousand dollars, Allie. Which one is it? Because I had it's a Bluebird, the original Polly Pocket Bluebird made in 1993. It also has the original dog and cat. Okay, I had that. I had this. Oh my god. Well, I guess I'm a thousand. I guess I you're a thousand air. <laughs> <laughs> You just start going through storage and seeing if you have any. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I was calling in about. But God, I didn't expect to answer it. Scared me because, like, that was like my biggest fear was someone's going to answer, and then I would just. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> She's never going to call in again. We really we really egged Maria on to pick up. So sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. This... I can barely hear whoever is in the background, but. Well, thank 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 you so much for calling in and thank you for being such a good sport about us picking up. We've never done this before, but I I was on the Google Voice page and so when it it started ringing and we're doing a mailbag episode, I was like, you guys, someone's literally calling in right now. So we had to answer. Oh my god. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, it's great to well, talk. Thank you for answering. Of course, and thanks for calling in. Yeah. Okay. I love you guys. We love what you do. Love you Thank too. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> wow. Okay. So I think that there's like, this is kind of the same as the Beanie Babies where you can really list it for whatever you want. Like it just, it's, it's whether or not you'll yeah. get a buyer. Yeah. There's some for like, I mean, there are some for like $200, then there's some for 70 and then. And then there's some for like 20 though. So it's yeah. like. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Maria, list it. If you find it, yeah. list it. See what you can get. Yeah, I, I, I'll i go f- try and find it. And then also, just so everyone knows that hasn't played with a Polly Pocket, they're so much fun. I, they are. I really, I never, I don't think I ever had one, but like my friends had them and I always, they were neat. I was they feel, they feel easy to swallow. Yeah, definitely not for like two year olds. Yeah. You just got to be careful, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just be careful around your Polly pocket. You don't want to swallow one of those babies. Just don't get too yeah. hungry. Don't play with them when you're yeah. hungry. You don't want to swallow one of those little, don't little guys. Don't lick them. Don't taste them. <laughs> I know they look delicious. Yeah, one of those little humans. Oh, God. Okay, well, should we get into these voicemails? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. That was so fun. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, guys? Right? Right, guys? Yes. Right? That's fun. Yeah. Good night. This is a message for the web crawlers. Oh. My three okay. favorite parasocial friends. <laughs> the ladies, Hato and the B Mac Dre, coming at you from uh, WA. I had a dream last night. I wasn't going to call you, but in the latest episode, you said give you a call. Yes. Um, could you call up? Congratulations. And Happy New Year, too. Happy Yay. New Year. Um, all right. So, this dream last night involved you wonderful three women. Oh. We, uh, well, you were. I wasn't really part of the dream. I was just, you know, you were in there and I was just viewing it from the outside. He was jerking um, off in the corner. Uh, so, <laughs> Allie. Like, body, I guess. Or like, yeah, it was a body. Um, but it had been like, Stripped of its skin and stuff. It was a little bit gruesome, but it wasn't like, what? you know, it was a bit more cartoony or like medical doll ish in the dream. So yeah, like had no skin and it was just like the bones and like connective tissue and stuff, I guess. Um, and like muscle and yeah, muscle and connective tissue, right? I think so. 
and its like thoracic cavity was all taken out and stuff. It was just like ribs, you know. Ali, in her, uh, you know, all her wisdom, is like, hey, we could try this. We could try this and see what human flesh tastes like. Uh, oh oh no! Like, That's a great idea. Uh, I'm really good at butchering things. Was this and, uh, Maria, of course, was like, yeah. Ali, no. Um, <laughs> really horrified by the whole prospect. <laughs> Anyway, so Melissa then, like, gets the medicine bag and opens it up and uh, reaches inside, you know, presumably to get medical instruments, which is what she does, but she comes out with these gloves that are like Edward Scissorhands, but with, like, scalpels and Hell other yeah. medical Oh, my on. God. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria was even more mortified. Yeah, that's um, probably, like, what in the world? Which is kind of funny. So much so that Melissa was like, ah, and then started chasing Maria around with yep, her, like, this checks with out. Um, yeah. yeah, then I woke up. So that is the dream. Aren't you glad you guys are star for content? Because that is quite not a great role. Anyways, love you all, of course. Shout out to the Discord. Big ups to the main man, Jeb, our uh, unofficial slash official mascot. And uh, peace out. <laughs> wow okay good cool dream what a nightmare what a nightmare it's important though to note that of all three of us maria is the one who once said that she would taste human flesh <laughs> did true. i did i really yes uh-huh. yes you did i can't re- i don't oh, think i in- would I take it back because I thinking about it now, I'm like, I don't want it. I don't need it. I mean, earlier today, you yeah, know, in our last episode, it. I was saying how I, I don't want to eat, you know, macaroni and cheese in a bread bowl. What makes you think that I, you know, want to try human flesh? Yeah. La- I mean, last night you said you're too lazy to make uh, overnight oats. <laughs> <To> make <laughs> so, overnight I oats. <laughs> so I don't even think that you'd be able to carve up a human. That- no. Oh, no, no, I just no. don't want it. I, You know, I may have said it in the past, but I really have changed my tune. And I, I don't think... It's not for me. All right. Well, yeah, that's a good that's a good slogan. Maria, human flesh is not for me. It's not. You know what? It's not for me. <laughs> All right. Well, to each their own. Okay. Next message. Yeah, I was wanting to place an order for pickup. Can I get a large supreme <laughs> pizza and then a large meat lovers? Hold the meat and hold the sauce. Okay, never mind. That was a lame joke. Sorry, sorry. Uh, this message is for the web crawlers. Um my name is Caleb out of uh, Illinois, um, and I was uh, wondering if you guys would ever consider doing a uh, episode on the uh, missing four one one phenomenon. I don't. I, I you guys may have touched on it. No. Uh, maybe once or twice, uh, briefly, but I can't see where you have ever done like an entire episode on it or anything like that. Um, basically, for people not familiar, um, this uh, police detective, his name is uh, David Politis. And uh, what he does is he's a former police detective, and he goes he, he he's gone to national parks and uh, picked up um, various stories about people who have gone missing under baffling circumstances, mostly in North American uh, national parks and forests. And it's not so much how many people have gone missing; it's the circumstances surrounding their disappearances. It's just it's it's absolutely baffling, and it's been. Um, one of my, um, uh, I guess you could say, you know, addictions for the past year or so. Just it's, it's really interesting. Um, and uh, he, he's got a great channel, uh, Can Am Missing Project, and like Mr. Ballin has done, you know, videos of this on the internet. Um, but there's just so much to cover. It, it might take two episodes if, if you were ever interested in doing, you know, a uh, an episode on it um, or anything like that. And I would like to actually, you know you know, get your guys' thoughts, you know, if, if you ever decide to do, you know, what you think is going on, you know, with this missing 411 phenomena. I'm always, you know, excited to get uh, people's uh, hypotheses, you know, on on this particular subject. Um, and by the way, uh, Maria has just about the cutest laugh I've ever heard in my life. Thanks. Oh, that's nice. nice. Maria. I'm going to blush. Oh. I sound. I think I have a laugh like Betty Rubble. What is Betty Rubble? She goes <laughs> like she does like a like oh. a, if I were to laugh, it would sound like Betty Rubble's laugh. But um, thank you. That's very nice. Uh, missing for I've never heard of this. David Paulides is a former police officer who's now an investigator and writer known primarily for his self-published books dedicated to proving the reality of Bigfoot 
and establishing the Missing 411 Conspiracy, which is a series of books and films which document causes cases of people who have gone missing in national parks and elsewhere. Whoa, These we got it. These cases are unusual and mysterious. Huh. We got to do Great something on That's that. interesting. Okay, next. Next voicemail. This message is for the West Crawler. Hi, girls. This is Cassie. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Oh, hi. hi. I hear you're all caught up with your uh, voicemail, so I thought I'd better leave one. Yeah, thank you. I'm on my way to the airport. First time doing any air travel since the coronavirus. Ooh. So it's going to be a little bit exciting. Good to get out of, like, Adelaide, so... Yeah. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia, in the land down under. Um, <laughs> love you, show. Keep it up. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, two Australia messages in a row. Wow, wow that's pretty good. That was hot. <laughs> He said he was from Perth and she's from Adelaide. So I think we've got um how far are all of Australia. We need Sydney. We need Sydney. We need Melbourne and um, Melbourne. 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 And then we need um someone from up north. Someone from up north could uh, give us a call from like the Kimberley region. Ooh, Kimberley. The Kimberley. Kimberly. The Kimberly. Australian accents are hard to do. I mean, they're... They are. They really are. It's like a very specific dialect. Yeah. I feel like if you just... Everything goes up at the end. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything goes up at the end? Goes up everything at the goes end? up at the end? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ellie. Hey, put another, sh- put another shrimp crawlers? on the barbie. Shrimp on the bobby. <laughs> Where is that from? Why does all everyone always say that? What's that? Crocodile from? Dundee. He says that in that. Yeah, I'm Crocodile Dundee. Put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> okay. Jim Carrey says it in uh, Dumb and Dumber, or, or one. He says it in one of put oh, another maybe shrimp croco- on the bobby. Maybe Crocodile Dundee doesn't say it. Then hold on. Put. Another Oops, uh-oh, uh-oh. I have a <laughs> feeling this is going to go into web crawlers search mode and people are going to start watching all sorts of Crocodile Dundee movies trying to figure out. No, I think he does say it. It's in Dumb and Dumber, but it originated in a series of television advertisements by the Australian Tourism Communi- Commission oh. starring Ali Paul Hogan, who was Ooh, Crocodile right. Dundee. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I there know that. it is. I know a quote when I hear it about shrimp. The full quote spoken by Hogan is, I'll slip an extra shrimp on the Barbie for you. And the actual slogan of the ad was, come and say good day. Come and say good day. I don't like come a man telling g'day. me he's going to slip a shrimp on the Barbie for me. You'd like that, right? No, I feel like he could have said it a little different. I think it's nice. It's saying like, hey, we weren't expecting you, but I'll put, I'll put an extra shrimp on <laughs> yeah, for you. Yeah, I'll put another shrimp on the bottom. Hey, hey, we weren't expecting you. I just like, I wanted to be like, would you like, would you like a shrimp or there, there's always going to be shrimp for you in Australia. <laughs> Here's the advertisement. I'll send it to you guys. This is so interesting because it's from the tourism board. And now, like, when Americans do an Australian accent, it's, like, the thing they go to. So isn't that interesting that, like, Australia was, like, here, like, this is us. Come visit us. And then Americans were, like, okay, this is what we associate you with. Yeah. It, from 1984. Just across the Pacific, you know? Hello? Looks like a boatload of your countrymen coming in there now. Right. And a plane load. Better fill the icebox, then fire up the barbie. Because Aussies like to make you feel at home. G'day, viewers. Just been telling the Yanks how Australia is the best place for a holiday and the friendliest place on earth. The beaches are crisp and clean, the beer's cold, and there's plenty of shrimps on the barbie. The least we can do is make sure everyone's smiling. I'm not asking you to rent out the spare bedroom or anything. Just flash the pearly whites and say good day to a visitor. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> don't make a liar out of me. Don't don't <laughs> make a liar that, out of me. That's a threat. <laughs> Come God, on, so don't make a liar a, out of me. What a weird way to end us. 
I wonder if there's an American American tourism board. uh, Is there one video? I don't know. I can't really find one. Who would have been in 1984? Who would have been the person telling people to come to America? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, Tom Selleck. Yes, it would have been Tom Tom Selleck. Selleck. He would have been like, come on down. We got burgers. Yeah, we got burgers. Come get a slice. We got tits, burgers. (laughs) We got guns. Guns, tits, and burgers. Come visit. (laughs) Guns, tits, and burgers. (laughs) America. (laughs) Hulk Hogan. Hey, brother. (laughs) Hey, brother. (laughs) We got brothers. (laughs) We got (laughs) burgers. We got tits, wrestling, burgers. We got football, American football. Okay, next message. Water slides. Hi, web callers. I am so glad after listening to today's mailbag um, that Maria didn't answer and just let it go to voicemail because, oh my God, now knowing that that's really scary and I would have just hung up. Be careful. But anyway, it's um, it's Rachel the Widow. I'm calling. I have recovered from the embarrassment of my three-parter last time. Um, and now that you're caught up, I'm sure you're just going to get a ton of people calling in now uh, coming out of the woodwork. Um, first of all, I want to talk about how I love when um, callers are like, hey, I don't know if you're going to play this. I understand if you don't want to play this or whatever. Uh-huh. Like, they don't understand that you play everything because <laughs> I have left some unhinged voicemails ever than you there's no way you're screening these unless it's garbage uh, uh, audio. That's um, true. So I just thought that was cute. Um, but the real reason I called, and I hope this doesn't make people too mad. I don't like to be the villain, and I think this is a villainous thing to do. But I have, oh, no. I have to, I have to speak my truth. Okay. I'm scared. So. A little background about me. I love pizza. It is my favorite. Food. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. My late husband and I met. While working for a certain pizza company, and you would still eat it all the time. Like, we just loved it and never got sick of it. I love every kind of pizza, frozen and cheap to fancy, New York style, Chicago deep dish, Chicago thin crust, Detroit style. Um, Detroit style. All kinds. I, I just, I think there's room for all of it. I hate the whole debate of which one's better. It's just, it's all good. It's all pizza. I agree. The only time I have ever had pizza that I hated. Oh, no was in St. Louis. <gasps> it was the St. Louis, I, I think it was Emo's no, that I got. I got no. the one they told me to get. And it was disgusting. I hated no. it so much. And I, I feel bad for saying it because I hate to yuck someone's yum. So I'm so sorry, Taylor, but it was I did not like it. The, um, the crust, oh, my God. It's, it's like a matcha. So it's less, and when it's done as a pizza, it's less of a cracker crust and more of a cardboard. Oh, and then the cheese, you guys looked up and saw that it was like a blend of three cheeses. Yeah. But the thing is that it's a processed cheese that tries to be a blend of these three cheeses. So it's like putting Velveeta or American cheese on a pizza. And then, don't get me wrong, there's room for processed cheese in, in places where you want a good melting cheese. But a pizza doesn't need that because it, it melts because it's at such a high temperature in the oven for a long enough time that it does not need processed cheese that sticks to the roof of your mouth. It is oh. not good. <laughs> There's a part two. Wow, I am shook. These are fighting <laughs> words. These are really, these are fighting shook. words. This is going to cause chaos. God damn it. I'm talking for too long. Anyway. Uh, I'm sorry. I I hate to, I hate to be the person to come in and say the thing you like isn't good, but I I just in my experience I did not like it. Um, I think you guys should try it and let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to give you the other opinion so you weren't going in with too high of expectations because I don't think it, it's good. <laughs> it's the only pizza I've ever had that I didn't like. Even when people are like, "Eh, this pizza isn't good," I'm like, "Eh, it's pizza." This one, I just, ooh, I, I, mm, I didn't like it, and I'm a pizza lover, and 
uh, has it. Oh, for uh, Christmas this year, my mom got me an ornament that is a glass ornament, a slice of pizza, and it says true love on it, which I thought was sweet because I love pizza, and that's how I met my late husband was working for a pizza company. So that's uh, a bright note to end this on. I love you guys, um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Shots fired. I'm, I'm scared to see where this goes. I'm scared. I'm scared for, for your life. Yeah, I'm scared. Wow. Oh. There's only one way to settle this, and it's to get some Emo's pizza. That's it. Yeah, we got it's, it. on, it's on Gold Belly, but you have to get 10. <laughs> yeah, so Melissa, we should order one, and then I'll come over and steal it. some, and then Maria... I don't know what to do about you. You're out of luck, Maria. <laughs> where is Emo's from again? St. Louis. St. Louis. Missouri. I don't know where that is in pro- proximity to where you are right now. It's in the middle of the middle of the country, basically. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I've never heard someone have such a reaction, but I can understand it. I can understand having something that you just yeah. really don't like, and it's shocking. It's shocking to take a bite of something you don't like, but. You know, there's some people that don't like white oleander, present company <laughs> included. Oh, sure. shit. And oh, I do. Shit. And I love it. And it's one of my favorite movies. So this is where this is different strokes for different, for different folks. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Next. Moving on. Hi, web crawlers. Um, this is Talia. I haven't called in for a little while. Um, I forgot that, like, when you call or number, that uh, it rings for a while, and then, like, I, I already know that it's going to voicemail. So, like, what am I waiting for? Um, first of all, I just want to say that y'all should kind of claim with yours, because I'm pretty sure that you should get, like, an affiliation fee from Mike Myers or something. Like, I'm pretty sure that the amount of people who even of you from the top doubled thanks to you so like cash in on that <laughs> you know don't waste the opportunity make that coin i wanted to kind of bring something up to you maybe you'd find it interesting um oh. i've moved in about three months ago again with a roommate after i've lived for like a year or so alone and i've loved living alone but it kind of my city i had to kind of move to a different place and then um now i have a roommate and um um, it reminded me how much I fucking hate people in my space <laughs> daily. <laughs> and, um, he's just, what can I say? He's just absolutely unbearable. Like, I wanna, and I I'm, I'm a very, like, I'm genu- genuinely a nice person, but I wanna hit him across the face with a frying pan. Like, I wanna, sick. <laughs> I have these violent cool. urges against, like, a person that's living around me and, uh, walking and using my stuff. And so I wondered, like, do you guys know any stories about, like, roommates killing each other? Or, like, <laughs> roommate murder or anything like that? Because there have to be, like, very crazy stories about roommates. It's not a good alibi. Um, out there and <laughs> yeah. I just don't know about. Um, I don't know, maybe that will make me feel, like, not alone for wanting to kill them. <laughs> I just want to state that I'm not going to kill them, okay? I promise. I swear. Um, I will not touch a hair on his head. I just really want to. Um, just now I finished listening to the last um, mailbag and um, Joran mentioned Peter Gabriel and <laughs> that made me think of uh, obviously like the song Sledgehammer which is amazing. And um, then I thought about it and it kind of hit me. I'm going to sing to you. <clears throat> oh, you like nice. Sledgehammer? I want to be your web crawler Oh, mm, mm, why don't you crawl my web? Right? Uh, that's right? nice. And also, yeah, that's I have great. One, okay. Um, which is not Peter Gabriel related. It's Journey. It's not Genesis. But <clears throat> <laughs> don't stop corrupt. Oh, there's a part oh, two. Oh, no. Okay. Don't stop crawling. Hi, web crawlers. Well, the shame. Um, <laughs> mid uh, mid song. I'll just sing the song and uh, get out. Of. <laughs> Don't stop crawling. Ooh. Crawling the web. Voicemails, emails, and 
and sweet baby jab. Oh my god. Anyway. Beautiful oh my god, voice. that was beautiful. That was gorgeous. I just found a ranker article, 10 people who were slain by their roommates. <laughs> There was a slaying suicide at Harvard University, roommate oh, slain God. over a League of Legends, Sarah Joe oh. Pender ends roommate with boyfriend, Facebook post prompts revenge, killing. So yeah, there's there's tons. You're you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. But let you know, just try a little, you know, just maybe do some We um, don't condone it. We don't we condone it. We don't condone it, it but we maybe don't condone- Murder. Some meditation, some some just breathing exercises, some meditations. Yes. Rise above. Maybe go for a walk. Yeah. If, if the roommate's annoying you, just get out of there. Take yes. a walk. Walk it off. As we told uh, Detective Jack in the other episode, walk it off. Yeah, you got to walk, walk it, it off, off Jack. Jack. <laughs> walk it off, Jack. <laughs> okay, next message. Hey, guys. Uh, this is for the web crawlers. My real name is not Nadia again. But oh. I am the winner of the Patreon subscription. So thank you. I'm so Woo! excited. <laughs> um, I can't believe I actually Congrats. won something. It was like, I was ridiculously overly excited about <laughs> winning this contest. So I really hope you guys know how much I appreciate it. I was like crying to my boyfriend about how I won. Oh my God. Um, so really big accomplishment for me. So please know <laughs> that it won't go unappreciated. Um, I was listening to the Lisa Frank episode, I mean, a long time ago, but you guys said to call in because you're all caught up, so I'm calling in. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was born in 1990, so I had Beanie Babies, I had AOL, Instant Messenger, nice. um, yes, I had online boyfriends with screen names, and they were probably 50-year-old men Hell that yeah. were perverts, <laughs> um, so I can totally relate to that. I'm also going to go out on a limb and embarrass myself. Was I the only one that cybered with all those people? Oh, yeah. Um, I used I mean, to cyber. I know I wasn't yeah. because I know my other <laughs> friends did too. But oh, if I you did. really think about oh, how sick and fucking I cybered. That is that, <laughs> you know, that's what we were doing and we didn't know who these people were. It's so and crazy. they really that's weren't perverts. We were I, mean, really I forgot about cybering. Uh, oh, my God. I had, like, of course, I had like 10 million boyfriends at the same time. One of the guys' name, screen names was Christian Rock Guy. So oh, my God. There, I'm calling you out. Um, but I had a little journal. Actually, it had M&Ms, like the candy cartoons on the front of the journal. And it had, <laughs> I, like, cataloged all of the screen names <gasps> and oh reported God. on all of them. So, like, some of them were friends, some of them were boyfriends, some of them were my friends' boyfriends. Oh, um, my God. So, I, like, cataloged them all. I had kind of a description of every single one. I still have the notebook. It's at my parents' house. That's amazing. Um, That's so cool. I really don't look at it because I'm too embarrassed, but (laughs) I should at some point, maybe when they sell the house, I'll take a look at it. Um, But one time, my sister, who's four years older than me, you know, we had one computer back in the day, and it was a desktop. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to take turns going on AOL and stuff. So. I had some boyfriends and we were cybering, which is just sexting now. Yeah. But yeah. pretty much I used to copy and paste all the conversations um, oh with my all my God. boyfriends and save them and print them. <laughs> so one time I copy and pasted some cyber thing that I had said and it was like, I'm wearing a see-through song. And oh then I was like, I don't know, super young. Like, I, I don't know. This is probably super creepy, but I hope I'm not the only one that was doing this. No, I, I did this. I don't know. No, yeah, I did well, too. There's a part two. Hell yeah, we did this. And I don't even think I knew like what sex was really. Like no. I'd be like, I'm blowing on your penis. Like I thought that that's <laughs> what a blow. I thought that's what a blowjob was until I was like 17. Like I thought yeah. you were like blowing yeah. on a wiener. <laughs> Sorry, Maria, I wasn't as sexually advanced as you. Cut off. Um, again, this is part two for the web crawlers, but pretty much I copy and pasted this really like weird cyber message and um long story short my sister was on the computer next and was doing something for school and like copy and pasted and she saw it and she was like hey um you might want to be careful what you copy and paste Uh, and that still to this day haunts me like thank god we all have our own computers now but that was really embarrassing Anyways, if this is way too raunchy or disturbing, you don't have to play it. 
Um, but hey, what the heck? Love you guys. Bye. I'm sure there's a lot of our listeners who do the same exact thing. That brings back so many. Ma- I like I re- know. remembered internet boyfriends, but I there's a great episode of Pen15 about cybering. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's so funny. I totally forgot about cyber sex. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah, like before I even had sex, I was like, yeah, like, like saying 13, crazy 14, stuff. Like saying the craziest shit. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> How insane. Yeah. Okay, next message. This is for the web crawlers. Um, hi, this is Molly from Washington, D.C. I have been listening to you all since pretty much the beginning. Um, I first heard you all on Hollywood Crime Scene, and um, I've been obsessed with you all ever since. Um, you all are my favorite podcast, which definitely means a lot because I listen to you a ton of podcasts. Um, don't tell Hollywood crime scene that, but I still love them too. Um, it's all been said before, but you all are just like the perfect combination of like true crime and spooky stuff and interesting stuff. Um, I said in my review that it feels like you all are, um, I, I'm at a sleepover with my three big sisters, but, um, also I can already tell this is going to be a two-parter. Um, but first I just wanted to say how funny I think it is when everyone calls in super anxious. Um, and I feel like it's because the kind of person who listens to a true crime podcast is just like inherently anxious mm-hmm. like me. And then also yes. I feel like we know that you're going to play whatever we say, no matter how off the wall it is. <laughs> yes. um, but I wanted to just quickly tell a story um, from my childhood and get your thoughts on this. Um, okay. So when I was little, we first lived in a smaller house and we ended up moving to a bigger house uh, when I got older. And when we were living in that, that small house, um, I think I was just about two or three, um, I got the most sick that I had ever gotten up in my life until that point. Oh, no. um, so one of those nights that I was super sick, um, I was sleeping in a different room than my mom and my dad. And my mom put me to sleep in my room. She went to sleep herself. Um, and then in the middle of the night, she heard a man's voice murmuring in my room. And she looked to her side and saw that my dad was still sleeping next to her. Um, so she freaked out, ran over to my room, and as she was coming into my room, she heard me say, or she heard a man's voice say, um, that's all right. There you go. You'll be better soon. <gasps> and she said, Molly, um, what, was there a man in your room? What, what's going on? And apparently when you're like two or three, it's, you, you just don't know how to lie really that well yet. So she believed me when I said, um, yes, mom. I also couldn't talk that well when I was little. Um, yes, mom, man in room, dressed fancy like wedding. So I don't know if that means she was like in a tux or something. But um, so my mom always thought this was my guardian angel. And she told me the story all the time growing up. But now I'm wondering if it was um, a ghost or something because she has other stories about that first house we lived in about all these different spooky experiences she's had. Um, so then I was thinking, you know, someone said in another voicemail, um, what's the difference between, um, you know, an imaginary friend and a ghost? Are they the same thing? And I'm just like, well, is a guardian angel just pretty much a friendly ghost? Or is there a difference because a guardian angel is like never been human while ghosts are human spirits? Um, so I would be curious to hear your thoughts. I love you all so much. Um, never stop making... Oh, I think there's another... A part two. Hi, this is for the web crawlers. Um, this is Molly from DC. I just left you a voicemail, and in my voicemail, I promised a two parter. Um, so now I feel like I had to call in, even though I was pretty much finished. But what I was saying was that I love you all so much, and please stop making. You're know, never stop making. <laughs> please um, stop. Alive, that was please great. stop. Um, all right, we'll love you, and uh, I just like everyone else. I just feel like saying goodbye. <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> Please stop making. <laughs> I think a guardian angel could be uh, either. I think it maybe could be someone who's never been here, or it could be your intuition, or it could be like a grandmother who's passed and is, you know, like taking care of you. Like I think it could be a myriad of things. So maybe it was a ghost, or you know, it, I don't know. That's wild, though. Yeah. That's really wild. Wow. That's yeah, scary. that's crazy. I wonder if she got better after that yeah well she's still alive yeah still alive and kicking yeah (laughs) okay time for the last i think there's two more melissa because we got an extra oh you sent me another Mm. one okay second to last voicemail 
Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. Um, my name is Erin, and I'm calling after I heard um, your most recent mailbag episode where you're talking about um, the affiliation between Amish people and Mountain Dew. Yes. Um, yeah. i got to be honest. I had to pause the episode, so I called immediately, so maybe you talk about this. But I would like to also request an episode on the Amish and uh, the Mennonite community. Just my understanding that there are um, pretty similar and tied together in a lot of ways. But so I'm in Pennsylvania and we have like a mythology around the Amish per se, but, um, they're kind of mysterious. You'll see them in Walmart with light up sneakers and like <laughs> sparkly skirts on with the bonnet. So as someone that is, um, not Amish, that seems confusing to me, similar to the Mountain Dew thing, but, um, I have always been told that, like, they have their own laws and law enforcement will not mess with them. They're, like, a sovereign-owned community within the U.S. Um, so I would really love to hear an episode about the Amish. Um, okay, thank you for being great. Bye. <laughs> okay, so now they like Mountain Dew and light-up shoes. <laughs> this, I wonder if they, like, wear wheelies. <laughs> what? So Heelys, 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 Heelys. Now huh. the Amish and Mennonite. The talk of just Amish with um, police makes me think of the movie Witness with Harrison Ford. I don't think I've oh, seen that. I don't. I haven't seen so, it. So in 1984, an Amish community outside Lancaster, Pennsylvania, attends the funeral of Jacob Lapp, who leaves behind his young wife Rachel and eight-year-old son Samuel. And um, I guess Samuel goes into the men's room and witnesses the brutal murder of an undercover police officer, but manages to evade detection by hiding in the stalls. And then what I think happens, because I haven't seen it in a while, is Harrison Ford then has to go to the Amish community to kind of figure out what happened. Oh, because they don't report anything? I don't know. So Detective John Book is assigned to the, the, the case. Are you reading it? Yeah, no, I am because I can't. Your head. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I thought you just remembered it. I was like, wow. And then what happens is that book slowly recovers <laughs> yeah. in their in their care and begins to develop feelings for Rachel, who likewise is drawn to him. Oh wow! And yeah, there's wow. a love story in there. Oh yeah, there's a love story. Oh yeah. I just had a really long article about the difference between the Amish and the Mennonites. But I mean, honestly, I, I can't read it right now. So we'll maybe do an article on that. An article? You're going to write a whole article? Oh, are you, you going to write an article? <laughs> we'll <laughs> do an to our merch Send store. Send it into the LA Times. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ship, shop it around and see who picks it up. <laughs> Uh, it's just like a book report yeah what i <laughs> learned by ali siegel <laughs> webster's dictionary defines mennonite communities as <laughs> in conclusion <laughs> oh my god oh, we, we laugh we laugh we laugh <laughs> well we got one voicemail last but not least last but not least well we haven't listened to it yet this is uh, brian from texas this is for the web crawlers uh i was just calling um i'm the guy who called earlier about uh all the potato eating kids at my junior high (laughs) and then um the guy i knew who kept his dad's dead body in the garage i don't think we heard that one (laughs) i don't i remember that voicemail Um, (laughs) this one is about a former roommate i had um Really goofy story. So he went with his mother to a a storage unit to help her unload or load or I forget. Um, But they went pretty late at night after work. So it was like 8 p.m. They're out there and all of a sudden he realizes that he needs to go to the bathroom. Um, And the storage uh, unit and all that, the office is closed and everything. So he kind of does what he needs to do and goes out behind the, uh, behind the, you know, uh, around the, the side of the storage unit and goes, starts going to the bathroom on the side of the storage unit. Uh, I should point out that this was number two. So he found what he thought was a nice dark spot and decided to kind of do his thing. And he's sitting there in the dark and, uh, 
he's watching. There's a field uh, there right by the storage unit. And across the field are some little, like, suburban houses. And he's watching a father and son sit there and work on their car together. You know, it looks like maybe a high school kid and his dad. And he's sitting there, you know, going to the bathroom and kind of ruminating on life and watching this, this uh, you know, nice little bonding Norman Rockwell scene across the field. And then he sees that both the father and the son kind of take a break and they're sitting around drinking bottled water and kind of staring at nothing and chatting. And then it occurs to him that his eyes have adjusted the light and he realizes that he has been sitting under a light, directly oh. under a light the whole time. And the father and son aren't sitting around chatting about, you know, car repair or whatever. They're staring right at him and pointing oh. at him. Uh, <laughs> he freaks out thinking they're going to call the cops because they're seeing a guy shooting in a field. Uh, he runs back to his mom and is like, we got to go. And they leave before they're finished unloading. There's also uh, sort of the matter of the toilet paper. I won't go into the details, but that was pretty gross and uh, involves some poor uh, storage unit employee. But anyway, yeah, so that's, uh, I feel, uh, figured y'all asked for more stupid stories when I called in on the last one. So I thought I'd throw another one your way. So that's the story of the time my uh, friend took a shit in the field and got watched by some random people in a suburban house. So, uh, yeah, hope y'all are having a good day and uh, honk honk. Cool. <laughs> I like honestly couldn't pay attention because he started that with remember the voicemail I left about all my the friends who eat potatoes and then my friend had a dead body in the basement. And I don't think I don't I would remember that if we heard that. Story. I remember the potatoes. I think the 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 there was one that I remember him calling in and it it get being really muffled and we couldn't understand it. I think that's what happened. So. It got really, it really gargled. gargled. So, Brian, if you can call back in. And by the way, Brian, thank you for calling back in because I had erased Brian's uh, voicemail on accident. I messaged him. I said, uh-huh. please call back. He called back immediately. Here we are. Thank you so much. But if you could call back again and now tell us about this dead body on a on a poker on a what kind of table on a card table. I, I don't shed. know. I got to hear. I got I, please call back. Just call back. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that guy. Yeah, I remember I edited out that part because of we it was something happened. The line got yeah. messed up. The just sitting yeah. on under like a street lamp shitting in front of um a, a father a and dad. son having some and quality son. time is quite a scene. That's that's <laughs> quite, quite a, scene. a scene. Quite a scene. Uh, all right. So that's it for now. Uh, guys, please continue to call in. You're so fun. We love you so much. So many of you from, uh, so, so many of you from Australia. <laughs> yeah. Dan yes. and, uh, <laughs> with the, ba- with the Bobby, with uh, the Bobby, with the Bobby. Anyways, I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stetton. And I producer Maria. And thank you, Amber Leah again for talking to us live because I know that was probably really frightening (laughs) so thanks Bye. bye bye an Erio's original powered by ACAST